Hi, Joe. Well, right from the start, I would like to thank you for accepting our invitation to participate in uh, this webinar. So we know that artificial intelligence is transforming many fields and it's no exception for the real asset space. Uh, in the discussion today we'll have, we will explore how spatial finance, a uh, concept that refers to the integration of spatial data and artificial intelligence techniques in the financial domain, is used in the real assets. So um, let's begin with my first question. Joe, can you tell me how is Nuveen leveraging uh, spatial finance to assess risk in the real asset space, such as farmland and tuberland, for example? Yeah, sure, and, and happy to be here and, and speak on these two really interesting topics. From a spatial data analysis standpoint, you know, we leverage spatial data to really visualize new deals um, where they're located, what is located near them. So our existing assets near them, can we benefit from um, some scale there, as well as sort of identifying water risks, climate risks, and crop risks. So from the minute we start analyzing a new investment, we're looking at different kinds of spatial data analysis. But we also use it in our existing portfolio to measure and classify a wide variety of natural land cover types um, such as forests, grasslands, shrublands, and bodies of water. You know, these land cover registers are the first step in establishing a, a really a natural capital baseline and kind of deepening our understanding of the ecosystem services on all of our assets because we manage such a large portfolio. Um, we do use the most up-to-date global biodiversity data sets for assessing biodiversity areas and vulnerable threatened species. Uh, and then all of this data that we get geospatially feeds into our natural capital accounting process, which is still in its pilot phase, but is a process which aims to quantify the ecosystem services on our existing assets. So our biodiversity, our water, our soil quality, and potentially either monetize those services in the form of timber, carbon sequestration, or biodiversity credits, as well as measure and value those ecosystem services to allow for better risk management of our assets and, you know, as a whole. So we really use geospatial data to kind of pull all of that analysis together. Um, in regards to your question on AI or artificial intelligence, you know, we've started using a service called uh, Climate AI. This service allows us to, well, it uses really some predictive analytics and some components of AI to look at how changing climate may impact yields agricultural yields in the future. So it allows us to really understand how um, decreases in like frost hours or chill hours uh, may impact our crop yields and, and make better decisions about which crops we want into the portfolio and, and sort of which areas we want to invest in over the long term, because we are long term investors in the asset class. Um, Kind of to conclude on AI, I think we're very optimistic about the benefits of, of, of artificial intelligence. Um, we do feel that farm management is, is a, sort of an extremely dynamic field and that many factors need to be understood. Um, so given that fact, we do plan on being very cautious when evaluating new AI technologies. You know, we want to make sure that the AI solutions are helpful and the output accurately manages the risks within our portfolio. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting and a completely a new sphere for a lot of people. And how could that technology be, be used to reduce risk and increase ESG opportunities? Do you have like one concrete example or use case to provide? Yeah, so with, with spatial data analysis, it really allows us to look at our assets and to see what kind of infrastructure is near them. So in California, a, kind of a key issue out in, in Central California where many of our tree, uh, tree nuts are grown is water availability and just how dry it is. So we use uh, spatial data to help identify areas where we could have potential recharge facilities. So water recharge facilities allow us to bank water and put it back into the ground during wet seasons. Uh, so we can access that water at a later time in either drier seasons or monetize it in the form of, of credits. So we, we are looking at potential areas um, in our portfolio we, where we can add additional recharge facilities and having kind of the geospatial data and understanding, you know, how close existing assets are to the necessary water infrastructure 
is an important component in ident identifying those opportunities. But you know, spatial data and that kind of analysis is going to help in a variety of ways in our portfolio. So mm -hmm. I think it will continue to help us develop kind of key biodiversity baselines. And as those markets from biodiversity credit standpoint continue to materialize, I think we'll be able to use geospatial data for, for those opportunities as well. And it, it also helps us sort of determine where in our portfolio we can have you know, participate in biodiversity sort of restoration projects or wetland restoration projects. So I think that water example is a, is a good example of, of the type of projects we can do, but I don't think it's limited to just to the water recharge. I think there's plenty of opportunities. Thank you, Joe, for providing this example. And I, I know we're at the start of the journey of uh, artificial intelligence. And what, in your opinion, uh, does the future hold in terms of artificial intelligence? And where are we going from now, especially, especially in the responsible investment space? Yeah, and I, and I think when I, when I think about artificial intelligence, it's really the, get the gathering of large data and analytics. So, I mean, I think that is going to increase. I think we're going to see a level of detail in our reporting to our clients um, that, that is different than it is now. So there's going to be more detail. I think this will result in more integrated reporting. <clears throat> so both financial elements, so your performance of your assets, as well as sort of ESG elements. Um, uh, so what are the ESG related KPIs on your farm? And I think it's going to kind of come into one integrated report. I think in addition to that fact, I think as mentioned in the previous questions, I think biodiversity markets are gonna to continue to gain steam and, and they may look similar to carbon markets in the next five to 10 years, perhaps even sooner. And I think this should represent a strong opportunity set for both farmland and timberland investments. From a risk management and analysis standpoint, I think we believe that AI could speed up the biodiversity analysis needed on, on our properties and the eco ecosystem services it provides. So for example, perhaps AI will be able to track, you know, increases or decreases in, in predatory bird species. Why that's important for us is because if we see a decrease in a predatory bird species, it might increase insects or pests to our crops and impact yields. So having a system that can proactively identify Bio, key biodiversity changes will, will allow us as a manager to implement steps to prevent that from happening and maintain strong yields and also the biodiversity ecosystems with our, within our, our assets. So to, so to conclude, I mean, it, I think we're very excited about AI. Um, we're very excited about all the data we're going to be able to collect. And I think we're, NSC is going to use this, this information to more proactively manage the biodiversity in our assets and create an environment for future sustainability. Well, we will definitely continue tracking the evolution of spatial finance and artificial intelligence. And thank you once more, Joe, for sharing your invaluable insights. It's very appreciated. Thank you for having me.